I'm sleepy, so you guys might have to keep me going here. So I'm going to bring up SQL Server. So um, Management Studio. And then I'll zoom in here. I'll show you a couple of things. Once we start doing SQL, rather than zooming it, I'm just going to make my font really big. <laughs> and then just zoom occasionally. I could try to reset the uh, just the settings and you know the display, but I often just seem to struggle with getting that just right. All right, so we always connect. Um, I will bring up the magnifier for a couple of these things. Couple of things. Um, I don't need to go to 300. This WTR18 slash SQL Express, that's the name of the machine, right? If you, um, so you can substitute that for the dot if you want, like on your own machine, if you don't want to type out the whole machine name. Dot backslash SQL Express also works. The dot is just a shortcut that leads you to the machine name, right? So you could, it will work also like this. Um, the other thing is that if you are, if you install the full version on your own machine, it won't be SQL Express. It'll be localhost if you did a default instance, or if you named it, it'll be the name of the server. Does that make sense? And it would still probably be dot backslash SQL Express unless it's localhost. Localhost doesn't need a backslash or anything if you just type in localhost. Also, this will probably happen. Um, it is sometimes the server should be running all the time. You should never have a problem connecting. But if you do have a problem connecting, sometimes, particularly I've noticed on laptops, but sometimes in the virtual machine too, the server shuts off. Um, and when that happens, I'll show you how to start it again. <laughs> so, okay, so the databases. How many have both the community assist and the metro all? Maybe the question is how many do not have? Okay, which one do you need both or? Do I need both? Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah you do need both. Yeah. You have both. I have both. So who doesn't have, you don't have? Okay, and you don't have, you need both. Okay, let me walk through getting both again. It won't take very long. Um, the first one is really easy. I'm going to just go to the web page. I don't want to go into Canvas necessarily, although we might go there eventually, so I probably shouldn't have closed it. Um, where I want to go, I guess I'll zoom it. You want to go to GitHub SP Conger. If you want, you can go directly to Database Schema, but GitHub.SP Conger, GitHub.com SP Conger. And you want a database schema. And um, within that, you want for this class the Community Assist SQL, not the Community Assist 2017. So you just click on that. All right, so notice this has some nice color coding and stuff. Um, so what we need to do is look at it raw. It's just text then. There's a little button that says raw. Raw. Okay. And then I'm going to do um, basically just control A, control C to copy it. Okay. So in Management Studio, I'm going to do new query. Okay, and then I'm going to just paste. All right, so that's um, 
this what this script does if you ever want to look through it is it creates the database uh, and populates it all those <laughs> inserts are populating it right so what you want to do then is execute it and you can either click the little green triangle or press f5 so I will you will need a virtual machine over there too so I'll help you for that once it's executed it should go through and show all the, the rows that one row affected that's all the inserts on there. now it may not show up over here mine does but if you right click and do refresh um, it'll show up now if you do like I just did I just ran it again when I have community assist there the very top of this is uh, if community exists again is exists deleted <laughs> right so at the very top of this it deletes the community assist that you have there it drops it and then it creates it again All right so you you can run this at any time and it'll return the community assist to its original state if you made any changes you made will be lost but it will return it to its original state Okay, so that's community assist. That one's easy. Now Metro Alt, and for this I really actually should have left. I'm gonna just do a new tab. And I should get there we go. It's not there, so I'm gonna do canvas. That's why I should have left canvas open. Seattle Central. This one is in Canvas. It's too big for a script. Um, so let me get in here. Okay, so I'm going to go to courses 222. And uh, you want to go to files. And there is a community assist text, which I, I wouldn't use it. I meant to delete it because it's slightly older even than the version that we downloaded from GitHub. And GitHub is a, a little bit better version. The 2017 is a better structure, but it doesn't have any data. Um, so I'm going to, uh, we want Metro Alt Log Zip, and you want to download it. So it it's too big. Uh, I don't know if that's downloading. Yeah, it did. Um, you don't you can't open it here so let's just save it I'm going to open it in folder okay so I have two of these here I'm going to right click I'm going to extract all and we don't want to extract it just to the download folder we want to um, take it to now the, the other you could extract it here and then just copy the files but it's easier just to extract it to where they want to go so I'm going to extract it to local disk C uh, program files SQL server uh, SQL server Express MSQL data so that's the path Select the folder, and then I, I'm not going to extract it yet. If I extract it now, it'll probably throw a bunch of errors because the files are hooked to SQL Server that are in there. <laughs> and then tell me they already exist in the copy. Does that make sense? You got it already? Yeah. yeah. Everybody got it. I mean, you need the virtual machine. Let me start now the virtual machine. Thank you. 
Give me a minute because I have to get out of this to do that. So just click on that. Yeah. And then you start it. Follow that. The little just hit the green arrow.
Yeah, although you could just leave it. So what you're doing is... Oh, well, you're doing full screen too. So yeah. You have to like, all the way to the full of the engage all the time. Yeah. I'm just trying to get out of the mouse. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see you guys can be a one from service to the mouse. Yeah, it should be there. Um, so let's do, take over the whole screen. Uh, do Microsoft do management. So there it is. Open up Microsoft so you can All right. So this is taping for all of this. <laughs> taping, I realize, is an anachronism. It's recording. Yeah. And community assist. I'll be right back there. Um, I was going to say, once you've done the extraction, you have to do uh, right-click, attach. So right-click, attach, and then add, and then find the Metro Alt, and then add it. I just left it as it was when it popped up. And I, did. Um, I would cancel this and open it again. So one of the things, databases are really hard to move when they do these. There's a couple of things you can do. One is you can script it if it's not too big and it'll script it into SQL. All right. I think Community Assisted Version there is, was scripted. I originally just wrote it by hand, but I'm pretty sure I scripted it from the thing. Uh, you can move the files by detaching and attaching them. However, a real database file could be terabytes. <laughs> All right, so they're not generally moved. There are other things you can do, like you can back up a database and you can restore to a different server. It's another way to move it around. But they're not really meant to be moved around easily. The files, uh, this isn't so much relevant to just doing the SQL. But the files are binary. They're not, um, they're not readable. You know, so only SQL Server can read them. That's for security reasons, pretty much. Uh, there's two files. You always have to take both files. One is the um, the data file. The data file, the MDF file, it has everything in it in the database. It has the structures. It has the stored procedures. It has the tables. It has the data. It has everything that you do in the database is in there. The log file is a list of all the transactions that have occurred in the database, right? Since your last backup restore, anyway. Uh, and they that file can grow really huge, because literally everything you do in the query window and stuff will be recorded. The good thing about that, although what, the way we've set it up is fairly useless, um, if the disk died, you could get your backup, which should not be on the same disk, and you could go get your log. So you could restore your backup, and the log would allow you to restore all the stuff that wasn't there in the backup. Right. That's assuming that you are doing regular backups. <laughs> and, they, and again, the log should not ever be on the same physical disk as the data file. They are here. Doesn't matter for us, but you know, just in terms of real life. Um, Questions, how close are we to set up? I need to get you a password. Are you having trouble with the password still? or No, you're in. Yeah, so it should be uh, Microsoft Management Studio, SQL Server Management Studio. So bear with me for a second. Um, Control-Alt, if you're in full screen mode, notice how that's frozen. Now I can come up here. 
and I can uh, go out of the full screen mode. I need to set one password here. Uh, I spelled your name wrong. Oh, I just looked up the last page. So I'm going to reset. It'll be password again. So it's just, password. yeah, just P at SSW0RD1. That's what it always is when it's reset. OK, so it's changed. All right, so let me get out of this. Okay, let's get back into the virtual. Are we ready, almost? Go. I'm going to undo. Well, actually, let's leave it zoomed for a minute. I'm going to make some changes. Uh, I'm going to leave this script up just so it'll reflect it. But I'm going to go to Tools, Options. You do not have to do this, but you might want to do a couple of things. One of the things that I'm going to do is change my font. Um, and I'm just going to change it so it's a lot bigger, so I don't have to zoom all the time. <laughs> so tools options if you know Visual Studio or if you do this and it is Visual Studio it has the same places so I'm going to notice that this font is 10 I'm going to make it like 21 uh, I'll leave it consult consulus or whatever but you could do courier if you want fixed uh, sometimes I do um, Trying to remember which ones I do do. What? Yeah. Uh, there are some others I do. I'm trying to remember which one I usually do. Totally drawing a blank. Verdana. Sometimes I do Verdana. The only reason I do Verdana is that it has really crisp curly braces and uh, parentheses. When you're coding, it's often really easy to confuse a curly brace and a parentheses and you're looking at things. But I'm going to use, I'll leave it at Consolas. The other thing I'm going to do, and this is the part that you might want to do, is I'm going to go to um, text editor, all languages, and I'm going to add line numbers. So I went down to text editor, expanded it, all languages, and then line numbers. I'm actually going to do one other thing, I think, before I leave this back in the fonts and colors. Uh, this is for the text editor. I am going to do for grid results. These are the results that it displays when you do the query. They're going to be real tiny. So I'm going to bring them up to about 20 also. When I do that, it's going to tell me I have to restart. But before I restart, are those big enough for everybody? Is it too big? I changed the uh, grid edit, the grid results. Uh, none of these are things you necessarily need to do. Um, these are mostly just to make it readable on the screen for you. Is that too big? Oh, I'm still zoomed. Let me unzoom and see if it's too big. 
it's not big enough from the back. It, are you okay from it with that way back there? Why? I can make it a little bigger. So I'll go back into tools, um, options, and I'll just make the um, go back to text text editor. Uh, where is it? Top one. I'll go to 24, which is, I think, is as big as it'll go. Um, okay. Is that any better? Okay. Let me um, also, I am going to kill and restart so that my, see how the, the results down here, how tiny that is? That's one of the things that I changed, but I have to restart. Um, the management studio for that effective take. <coughs> oh, I said I was going to save that script. I don't need to save that. Okay, so I'm going to start the management studio again. All of this is getting ready to do an assignment. So, <laughs> so a couple of you are downloading the. Uh, Things I once you guys are set up, and after I've done this, I'll help you get in. Okay. So, in terms of the, I will zoom initially, but then I'll unzoom when we get in there. So, what we're going to do every time is basically have a new query. This is an SQL class, so everything we're going to do is going to be in the query, right? Every once in a while, I'll have you do something simple outside of the query window, but mostly we want to do what we want to do is in the query window. Oh, one of the things I wanted to show, and this is really useful, is uh, you know this gives you what your table names are, because one of the problems you're going to have initially is that you don't know these databases. So when I ask you to go find things or to query things, it's sometimes difficult to know just what I'm talking about. So it takes a while to get familiar with it, but you can always show the tables here, and you can show uh, with a plus it'll list all these things, and you can look at the columns. So it'll show you the columns. It'll also give you the data, uh, data types for those columns. That's useful. Also, if you're really, um, I'm going to leave it zoomed while I do this part. So I'm going to, so what it, say I wanted to select uh, the donation date and the donation amount. I just drug it. That's what I wanted to show you um, from donation. You can drag them in if you want, right? I will usually type them, but you can drag them in if you need to, uh, you, you know, you just want to do that. Now, does anybody know, there's a couple of things that are going on here, why these are all red underlined. All right, so the context isn't set. Notice how it says master up there? That's the current context. So in order for these to be proper, I have to do use uh, community assist. And I can just execute that. You can also, highlight if you highlight a statement, it'll execute just that statement. All right, so I can go through and just do statement after statement, and it will highlight it. A couple of other things I want to say just about SQL Server. In other environments, each of these should end with a semicolon. Uh, you can put semicolons here. Doesn't hurt anything. Uh, but it ignores them in, in SQL Server.
but in MySQL or Oracle or something like that, the semicolons are required. Does that make sense? So when I run this, now it will give me the donation date and the donation amount. Anybody know why these have square brackets around them when I drag them in? I don't expect it to. I'm just asking. Yeah. Not really. So, so column names uh, cannot have spaces. They cannot have certain characters like an ampersand. They cannot have or an asterisk or a percent sign or anything like that. Right, those are forbidden characters. SQL Server doesn't know if you obeyed those rules. So what it does is it puts square brackets around it so that it'll treat it as a literal. It won't try to interpret anything inside it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it basically, anything you drag in, it's going to do that. It'll have the square brackets around it just because it doesn't know if you're following the rules or not. So I just drug. Like, you grab the field and just drag it to where you want it to be. Okay. You, you, well, it's a SQL class, so that's why you can change it here. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you can also, I'm going to just drag the whole donation. Just uh, Actually, I don't want that. I want to grab the columns folder. Um, let me press enter. I'm going to drag the, the column, the whole columns folder, and I get all of the columns in. And weirdly, it doesn't put the square brackets around. So I just drag in all of the, the columns if I wanted them. If you drag the columns, I mean, if you drag the columns folder for any table, so like if I did uh, employee and go to columns, it would give me all the fields for the column. Yeah. Why did mine put brackets here? I don't know. Maybe because you got it. Maybe. That's fine. Yeah. Brackets don't hurt it. And if there were any illegal character, it would make a difference. I don't know why mine didn't. Although it might if I put it. I'm just curious. This is really irrelevant. Select. No, I didn't. When I dragged the columns, I didn't. All right. So a couple of things. This is the basic structure of a simple select, right? You, you write the word select. One of the nice things in this environment is that uh, the keywords are color coded. So select is blue, from is blue, right? You select whatever columns you want to see and um, from whatever table you want to select them from. Does that make sense? That's the basic select statement. <laughs> Commas between each value, but no comma after the last one. If I put a comma after the last one and try to run it, it will give me an error. Okay, what? Here? This doesn't do anything. No, I'm talking about in line three. You go and select. This is the it's one not, statement. Okay. Yeah, Without the from, yeah. the up and one up above no, doesn't work. Okay, we go in the next. Okay. So if I were to notice there's an error here already, incorrect syntax near from. And that's because there's a comma up there. Yeah. You certainly. White space is ignored for the most part. Um, it is not case sensitive. SQL is one of the only languages you'll encounter that is not case sensitive. When you're writing this in a, like a text file, the convention, and I'm too lazy to follow the convention, is to do all caps for keywords. But it is, but it is case insensitive. It doesn't care. That's just the convention. And as I said, I'm too lazy to do that. <laughs> um, column names and values, when you're looking for them, may or may not be case sensitive. The keywords never are. 
the column names may be, that's a database option. Uh, and that's true even if you're on Linux. So unless you say that it's case sensitive, it's not. Does that make sense? Okay. So when I type these in, I, d I just drag these in, but it works just fine with. And it works just fine without the brackets, too. Uh, again, the brackets are if if you really want spaces in your in your words or something in your key. I would never do that, by the way. Don't put spaces in your names. Um, it, it, not only within SQL, but when you get into a programming language, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> spaces mean termination of the thing, basically. So this works just fine even though it has different case. And yeah, you can easily um, do this. That won't work until you have a space there, but that's perfectly fine. It can all be on one line if you want. The semicolon, as I said, in this environment is ignored. Oh, yes, yeah, SQL Server will ignore the semicolon. The only reason I put semicolons in is if you're going to work in other environments, it's good to get into the habit of using them. But uh, SQL Server does not use semicolons. Yeah. Run the first line first. I like that one. In there. Execute. And then try running the other one. With the S. Too. So one of the things, um, let's do another. I'm going to do a select asterisk from a person. All right, what does the asterisk do? Uh, yeah, it's, it's a wild card. A couple of things about this is that you should probably not ever use this in a like a programming environment, like where you're writing um, PHP or C sharp code, because you don't necessarily know what you're going to get back if they've made any changes to the table <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, so there could be issues with that. Also, it's very inefficient because the very first thing it has to do is a query of the table structure. Uh, all the table structures are stored in tables, right? There's all the meta information is also stored in tables. So the very first thing it has to do is it says, oh, this is the table. I, I need to query to see what the columns are, and then we'll return those columns, right? So it has a double query. It has to query the structure as well as the, the data itself. So it's a little slower, but then it brings back everything. Now, if you don't highlight, if I were to just run it like this, what I would get is the donation up here and the person down there, right? So you can you can run two at once if you want. Sometimes that's good if you're comparing two values and tables. Um, but if you just select one, then only the one will run. Okay, any other things I want to say about just the general syntax? This also, in terms of white space, this works just fine. In fact, you'll often see something like this, just, you know, whatever is most readable to you, particularly when you're acquiring lots of things. And that works just fine, too. Again, white space doesn't matter. It's a very forgiving language, although the things that will drive you crazy are commas, mostly. <laughs> okay. Any questions before I move on to the next? This is all stuff we kind of did in 220. I'm trying to give you a little bit more side information. but So I'm going to um, add something to select star from person. First, I'm going to run it. 
And you can see down there that the first person is Anderson, the second person is Zimmerson, and then Mann. So one of the things I want to do is sort it. And I'm going to order by uh, person last name. And there is IntelliSense in this environment, which is nice, too. So if it knows what the table is, it will give you a list of the columns. So order by is how you sort. So when I execute that, notice now it's Allen, Anderson, Baker, Baker, Banner, Baylor, Benefer, Bishop, etc. It's alphabetical by last name. If it's a numeric field, then it puts them in numeric order. Right? <coughs> One of the things, one of the general rules about a database is it doesn't matter what order you put your data in it. It doesn't have to be in any kind of sequence because you can resequence it any time you want. So this select, uh, that puts them in uh, ascending order. If you want to put them in descending, you can add a DESC, and then it'll be Z to A. So I'm going to execute that again. I should just do F5. Notice now it's Zukov, Zorn, Zimmerman, Yun, <laughs> and etc. So it's in reverse order. Um, I'm going to just copy this. I could change it, but I, I kind of want to have evidence here. So what if I wanted to do a uh, person first name? That What this does is this is the prime. Whatever is the leftmost is the primary sort, and this is a secondary sort, right? So if I run that... We'll do it a couple of different ways. F5 works too, so I'll try to do that instead of. Um, these are in alphabetical orders. Notice that uh, Baker and Baker, they have the same last name. So the only place where the secondary star comes in is where this, these are the same. So then it's ST, right? So they're in, they're in alphabetical order there. There's some other names I think that repeat more, but. Uh, if I were to do, let me do one more copy of this. The reason I'm copying it is when I paste it on the blog, it's good to have all the examples and not just modify them too much. If I put descending here, what do you think happens? It will still order by first and last name, but once it gets to the first name, it will put the, the bottom... Yes, yeah, that's correct. The first name is the last name is still going to be A to Z, but the uh, first name will be reversed. The descending only works on the column that you put it beside, right? So if I did descending on a last name and not on the first name, then the first name would still be A to Z. Um, let me show you this. So I'll show it both ways. So if I run this. Uh, when we get to Baker, now it's reversed. It's Tom Sally, because that one is reversed. Is that right? It's still a secondary sort. <clears throat> if I did descending here and not here, oops, I didn't select. Um, let's see if we got a name. There's Taylor. Notice that this one is in alphabetical order for the first and last name. And the three tanners, Chelsea, Nathan, and Thomas, are in alphabetical order ascending. But the other, the last names are in alphabetical order descending. Where this is really useful is with dates. Right? Because you can... Um, you know, choose a year and then a secondary order by month, and then a primary order by year, secondary order by month. Oh, so is that why it's starting always with year 
It, it actually that that's just day. that's just an international format, isn't it? One of the things that we'll do is I'll show you there are extraction there are functions that will extract the year. From the um, I think that's actually the next assignment. <laughs> All right, so that's sorting. Questions about that? Order by are the keywords. Guys, okay, so let's do another little change. So all of these are returning all the rows, right? So we have um, basically you can choose um, with the asterisk you're returning all the columns. Or you can select among the columns by actually naming the columns that you want to see. And the other thing about the uh, columns when you name them, which is often better, is you can – Name them in the order you want to see them. It doesn't matter what order they're in in the database, right? You can order them however you want when you select. So if you want to see uh, in the database their last name, first name, if you want to say first name, last name, you just reverse the column, you know, in the select. So let's do some where clauses. Um, So I saw there were three tanners. So let's do select. And I'm doing star because it's easy and I'm lazy. But as I said, it's not necessarily. So I'm going to say from person. And I'm breaking the line just for readability and to emphasize the keyword. You don't have to. Or I'm going to say where person last name equals a tanner. And again, this value may or may not be uh, case sensitive depending on the options that are active in the database. It's not case sensitive in ours. Single quotes, this will drive you crazy too. Whenever you're quoting a character type, you use single quotes. And this is fairly true. Um, it, it reserves double quotes for field names. They do, double quotes do basically the same thing as the square brackets. Um, and you have to put single quotes around character types. This is looking for a character literal. I mean, we're basically telling it exactly what to look for. So when I run that, I will get the three tanners. Now, is it case sensitive if I just No. It, as I said, it depends <coughs> on the database. There, you can set an option to make it case sensitive, but by default it is not. So those are the three tanners. Um, I'm going to do. I'm going to change tables a little bit here. I'm going to select star from. First of all, I'm just going to do from person address, and we'll just run that to get an idea of what that looks like, because there's some things I want to show here. Um, we've got the address apartment. Notice there are nulls there. One of the things I want to show you in a moment is how to do nulls. We've got a street. We've got a city. Um, we've got a zip, and we got their person key. So if I wanted to see all the people um, so I'm going to do select star from person address where um, person, notice my naming convention, it's very wordy, where person address city, and what I'm going to say, I'm going to put a not here, uh, equals Seattle. And what single quotes? So I'm gonna the not there is a keyword, and it will let me look at everybody that's not in Seattle. Does that make sense? Weirdly, I have to say not before the field. Um, you can't say where a person address city not equals Seattle. Although you can. 
and this is a, how you do it, comment, two dashes. You, SQL Server will allow uh, not equal and um, this, both of those as not equal. They are not ANSI standard, <laughs> but you can use them in SQL Server. This you probably recognize if you've done programming, other programming not equal. This is um, the only language I know that uses that is not equal is Visual Basic. <laughs> so those work also. So we get Kent, Bellevue, Shoreline, etc. There are some people that don't have cities listed too. The reason they wouldn't have cities listed, I think I probably did this after working with this in class when we were building forms and inserting people. There were probably a lot of dead, dull, dead entries that I forgot to delete. So does that make sense, the not? Let's look at the, the null, too. Um, what is a null? Do you guys have a good definition for that? Data has a, there's a yeah, it's unknown data. data. It's not a zero. It's not an empty string. It's unknown. Right? Um, one of the big innovations of a relational database structure was the ability to handle unknown data. Uh, did anybody ever look at, if, if you go to NOAA and you look at their old uh, weather files, they have massive, uh, basically, spreadsheets. They're actually comma delimited files of uh, weather history going back to the 1890s. Um, when they don't know a temperature, because you can't leave the space empty, they put in 999.99. Because nobody on Earth has ever had a temperature of 999.99, right? It's out of bounds. So you have to know that, or otherwise you get really weird averages. <laughs> you have to go through and delete all of the 999.99 the averages. Um, that's a problem, because if you miss some of those or you don't uh, delete, your, your averages are going to be wrong, right? Nulls are a way of letting you say, I don't know what this is, or it doesn't exist. It's kind of like ignore. It's kind of like ignore. And when you do an average, it does ignore the nulls. All right. When you do a sum, it ignores the nulls. Um, this can be an issue sometimes in that you might, like say you have, you know, the typical mean average is the number of records, you know, the sum divided by the number of records, basically. So the ones with the nulls in that field will not be counted, which is probably better, but sometimes it's not. There are some functions that allow you to substitute zeros for nulls, if that works better for you. But the thing about a null is that um, you can't say that it's equal to anything. So I'm going to say select uh, from person address. which has to have an E. And I'm going to say where um, person address apartment. And if I were to say it equals null, it doesn't give me an error, but also doesn't return anything. It would be nice if it would return something. You know, like an error, but it doesn't. So what I have to say is not equal, but is null. So what this will do if I run it is it will return everything where the apartment is null. So you have to use is to say that something is null. And as you might expect, if you want to say that it's not null, you just say is not null. <laughs> Again, fairly English-like in some ways. So if I run this, everybody has an apartment or a suite or something. 
So the thing that'll get you there is that you can't say equal null, and you can't say not equal. You have to say is not is. Does that make sense? Okay. I, I'm assuming it does so since nobody said anything. <laughs> A um, couple other little things I want to do. Let's look at donation. How to handle dates. Uh, so you see how to handle strings, right? I mean characters, character types. Dates are handled the same way here. So I'm going to do a real quick select asterisk from donation. And then we'll just run that to show what's in donation. So basically, we've got the donation date, uh, the donation amount, and a confirmation code, which is a GUID. Right. So if I wanted to look, I think these all have similar dates. What are we? There are a few in the 16th, 2016. Um, so if I wanted to select star from donation, where trying to okay am I still zoomed? I think I am. That's all right. You guys can see it real well this way, right? <laughs> um, where donation date? One word. I'm going to just say greater than. Um, let's just say one one twenty fifteen sixteen. There were like three things I think that were. Notice it accepts that even though it's not the same date, it'll accept a lot of date formats. <coughs> if I do that, it brings me back to three that were in twenty sixteen. And you could certainly enter it like this. A couple of other things, though. Um, it, when it's date time like this, time is part of the value. So we've got um, – let's see. I'm trying to think whether this will work or not. Um, so I'm going to select star from donation. And I'm going to say where donation date between, this works really well with dates. Um, so let's say there's 216. The days are... So let's do it. It's a two. Uh, fourteen. Twenty uh, sixteen. I'm just looking at the dates, trying to get it. And then I'm going to say and, and it does. You don't have to break the line here, but and. Uh, let's say two twenty. Well, so we got N227. And oops, let's see what we get there. So one of the things I want to show is between and, which will let you um, select between two things. The thing is, I think we're only going to get one date out of this. So it because there's time stamps? It's because of the time. Right, so the 227. Can you do a, a equal greater than? You you sir, well, you, can, the time you could do that. You just couldn't use between and. You could use greater than equals. Right. Yeah. So you just have to, you want to have that date, you can use 
Yeah, it would. So what happens when you do the 227 here? Because I didn't enter a time, the time automatically defaults to midnight. All right, so it would be 12. Actually, it would be what? 00, zero colon, 00, zero colon, zero, zero. And uh, so if, if we had anything at midnight, it would show. But this is after midnight, so it's not going to show. I mean, the other one is after midnight, so it's not going to show. If it's just a date time, I mean, there are, there's a date data type. And then there's a date time data type. If it was just a date, it would show everything. Right. But, but it, it includes the timestamp when it's running that. A uh, couple other things in donations. Let's just say... And I'm just going to, for numbers, where um, donation amount greater than oh, 500, let's say. The main thing I want to show is you, when you're doing numbers, you don't have to put them in quotes. Right? So this shows all the donations above 500. You could also do, I'll just do a quick comment here, uh, less than, less than equal to, greater than equal to, you know, you can do all of those for comparisons. Weirdly, they work with words too. If you wanted to look for a name that was greater than or equal to another name, it would do it. What it does is it resolves the ASCII values, the, or the, the character values, which are all numeric. In computers, words are numbers also. <laughs> OK, I think there's just a couple more things to show, and then we've got through this. I may not, I will try to give you some time to get going today, um, but if we need a little bit more time, too. I'll show you what the assignment looks like, and I'll show you how to turn it in. Too. And, but there's a couple more things to show. Is that all making sense so far? This is the beginning stuff. I mean, it, but it, it's actually a lot of it's really useful because a lot of your queries will be just this, this kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to go back to person. So I'm going to select star from person. And again, the reason I'm writing select stars is just so fast. It's not necessarily your best bet. Um, I'm going to say where last person last name um, like. And what letter do we want to, to look for? Starting letter. Do I have anybody with an F as a start of a name? Yeah, I have a few Fs. So what this does, like tells it that it's looking for a pattern, not a literal match. The percent sign there is a wild card. That means return uh, any, any last name that begins with F. The wild card says any number of characters after this. Right. Does that make sense? It's, uh, now, is that, is that beginning in line or end of line anchor? Because it just happens in this case, that was the first one. Well, so that's what it would look for. That's what it's looking for. If I wanted it to end with F, I'd put the percent sign on the other side. Okay. All right, so I'm going to come back to this in a moment, but let's do... Um, Nothing's going to end with F. But let's say we wanted to see anything that ends with N. It would just be percent sign N. Percent, by the way, also stands for modulus, but it knows by context because it's inside the quotes and follows like <laughs> that it's a wild card here. 
So if I run that, there's all these people whose names end with N, right? So you can do that. You can also do something like, is there anybody whose name begins with N and ends with N? Um, so let's run that. So there are several people whose names begin and end with N, right? So you can do that. Um, there's also, I'm going to go back to F for a moment. So there's a couple of, notice that three of these have R's in the third character. Uh, you could look I'm trying to think of how I'd want to do that. If you wanted to find an R in the third character, okay, so I'm going to copy this again. Um, instead of this underscore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do F underscore R percent sign. All right, so the underscore, unlike the percent sign, which is any number of characters, the percent sign is any character but one character, right? So what we're saying is we want it to start with F, it can have any character in the second place that it wants, but the third character has to be R, and then anything after that. So what it should do is it should return Ferris, Farmer, and Fortier, but not Fab Fabry. I have no idea how you pronounce that, Fabry. <laughs> I make these names up, but I don't. So see, it, it eliminated that one and returned only the ones that have an R in the third place. And uh, the, so the underscore is just any character in that spot, right? One character. The percent sign is any number of characters. A couple of things about this. This is kind of neat. It allows you to search for patterns. Um, it is incredibly inefficient. If we had tables with millions of records instead of dozens, uh, it could take hours. <laughs> There are better ways to do this, just to let you know. You can do full text indexes on things. It's something I usually show in the summer courses, how to set up a full text index and do that kind of searching. That's where that, that boring string array stuff comes into play, is performance and efficiency. Yeah, I mean, this, because what it has to do, it has to go through and find out everything that starts with an F. I mean, it, it really has to do several loops here underneath. And uh, because it has to do several loops, it can be really slow if you, if you have a big data set. Instead of paying more to, to index everything, then it. Yeah, it helps if you index, which we might look at later just for the syntax of indexing. Um, and we could talk about indexing. I don't have an actual assignment for that. I, again, that's something I usually cover in the summer. Indexing is uh, for, to improve performance. And all right, so there's a couple, two, like two more things I want to cover. I think this is most everything. I want to make sure I cover everything that's in the assignment. <laughs> and then, I, as I said, I want to talk about the assignment. You guys doing okay with this? And those of you that have your virtual machines, I'll help you catch up on this a little bit. What? I'm post all this. On the syllabus? Oh, I'm going to post it on the, the blog. Okay. It'll all be on the blog. The and it's being recorded, too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things I want to do, and I think I'll do it on donation again, I'll select, um, let's just do donation date, donation amount. 
And uh, I'm going to do, so first I'll, I'll add from donation. We're going to do a couple of different things here. I'm going to add um, uh, top, and it, this number, I'm going to say top 10, but you can actually put anything there. And if you're going to do top 10, you probably also want to do or, order by donation amount. Otherwise, the top 10 doesn't make any sense. Um, descending, so we get the biggest donations at the top. So what do, what do you think top 10 does? That gives you the top 10? It gives you the top 10. The thing to know about it is that it doesn't go through and decide what the highest values are. It just takes literally the first 10 rows, right? That's why I said if you don't do this, it's fairly meaningless. It just literally gives you the first 10 rows. Sometimes you might want that. This way, because we're ordering by donation amount and descending, it should give us the um, you know the highest amounts and in in descending order. So these are the the largest amounts. Some of the really large amounts happen in class when I do something like saying this is Bill Gates donating or something. <laughs> um, but those are the 10 highest. Now, 10 isn't magical. Uh, I could say top five, and it's perfectly happy with that. <clears throat> but that's a, that actually can be quite useful, right, for, for a lot of things. It works better with numeric things right but it, it'll I think it'll work with non-numeric fields it just doesn't make as much sense unless you're just trying to return a smaller subset Let's see if I can remember this one so I'm gonna actually just I'll copy this although I'm going to change it a little. I'm going to get rid of the top five. Uh, let's see if I can remember. My memory isn't what it used to be. Well, actually, I have this. Let's just go back. Uh, so down here where it says uh, blog, that's where I'm going right now. Do you remember my – so notice there's a basic select functions here. I'm going to post what we did today, but just to let you know, there's also last quarters. Right, and the quarter before that, and the quarter before that. Uh, what I want is offset five rows fetch. Okay, so let's go back to sequence. So offset five rows, fetch next ten rows. Actually, do you need a top with that? I don't know that you do. No, it doesn't have a top. Yeah. So what it does, now notice these are the top, 12. What I'm saying by offset five rows is it should start after these five rows, right? You're ignoring the top five, mm -hmm. and then you're starting after that, and then you're returning only 10. So it starts at 2,500 because there's like three or four of those. And then it goes to through the next 10. And again, there's nothing magic about this. It could be five also or, or any number. So basically you're taking like six and 15. Right. Yeah. 
so if I if I were to run these two together, maybe I don't know if I have enough room to compare them. So this has the twelve hundred, this twenty five, but this one starts just be, below that one. Notice the date is a little bit different, and it returns the five after the top five. So you can offset. You don't have to. The, the top returns the top. Offset will allow you to go any arbitrary number of rows down from the top and start there. And then you also have to say how many rows you want to fetch. Does that make sense? It, 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 again, that can be kind of useful. Sometimes when you're doing statistical things, you want to exclude the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, this allows you to do that fairly easily. <laughs> One last thing, and this is the very last thing, and then I'll. So I'm going to do um, select person key from donation, and we'll order by person key. So this isn't going to be real meaningful when we look at it, but I want to show you one other thing. All right, notice that uh, three here, one, two, three, four, is denote, they've done four different donations. Six has done a couple. Eleven has done a couple. Uh, a lot of the others are single things, but there are a few people that have donated several times. What if you only wanted to see unique donations, donors, right? You don't want to see uh, four numbers here. You just want the unique, no, the number of unique donors. Yeah. So what you can do here is you can do distinct. And there are times. This will come up later. If you're doing some averages and things, you're doing some joins, you can sometimes get artificial, uh, a number might repeat four times just because there were four donors there, four donations there, and that's not what you're counting. So sometimes distinct is useful for that too. A couple of things about distinct. It only works on the whole row. It does not... It returns unique rows. It does not return unique column values. Does that make sense? That's why I only call that person key, right? In the result set, the, the unique rows in the result set. So when I run that, now three only shows up once, six only shows up once, 11 only shows up once, right? It, it removes duplicates. But if I were to add like the donation date, uh, it would not remove them because they're not duplicated. It's the row that has to be Does that make sense? Sort of? So if I were to do, I'll just do it. We'll add donation date. Distinct won't have any real effect on this. See, there's, well, you know, the three may have donated more than once on one day. But 11 is there three times, right? The donation date, it's the result set that the row has to be unique. So you generally don't want to do it like with donation date. Generally just want to use the field that you want to see as unique. And again, that has such a really quite <coughs> useful thing at different times. So I will post this in a minute, but let's go look at the assignment. But are there questions? No? Okay. Is it that clear or just it's dull? And <laughs> SQL can be kind of fun, especially when we get up. Notice we have only queried single tables at a time. You know, probably next week towards Thursday we'll probably we'll start joining tables, talking about joins. And there are a lot of different kinds of joins that I didn't cover in the 220. So we'll look at those. 
and we'll talk about subqueries, which are fun once you get the hang of them, but are a little bit counterintuitive initially. Um, we'll do some other things too. So, uh, the assignments. So let's go to, that's the syllabus, assignments. Do you want me to put this in student view? It looks a little different here is why is why is it not opening? Open already. There it goes. One of the advantages of student view is the whole assignment would be visible. <laughs> oh, right. So um, notice we did everything in community assist. I'm going to have you do these in Metro Alt. One of the reasons I'm doing having it, you do it in Metro Alt is Metro Alt has some thousands of records in several of its tables. Um, that way, I mean, it's more fun to do a query if you can't just see the answer by looking at the table, right? It's like, um, that being said, I want to explain a couple of things about Metro Alt. It's supposedly like the metro system, buses, uh, bus drivers, you know, et cetera, and routes and uh, all of that kind of thing. I wrote it, um, populated it by writing C-sharp loops, and I tried to make them consistent where they would reference other tables when they wrote to new tables. And it was actually, if you ever, uh, uh, what is the O notation code? It's a O notation is a way of determining how efficient your code is. It would have gotten a horrible score. It took it like seven days to run yeah, okay. to populate this database. It shouldn't have taken that long. But it's because it was loop inside of loop inside of loop inside of loop. Even that, even though saying that though, the data is not consistent. Right? There's a lot of garbage in there. But it, you know, so don't when you look at it, if it doesn't make sense, it's probably not you. <laughs> There are a lot of bus drivers that are driving 24 hours a day. <laughs> so uh, don't catch a bus ride. <laughs> um, there, are, there are other things that don't make sense. But the general gist of it should be, you know, it, it just has a lot of records, which I think is more fun to query. Do you just want the um, SQL commands? Right. Okay. So that was the other thing. Um, all I need are the SQL commands that you did, you should run these. And I can usually tell by looking at them whether they will work or not. Um, so, you know, I might call you on it if it doesn't look like it. But they're just, it's just a text file. So one of the things you can do is you can, you know, it says a text entry box. You can just copy and paste from SQL Server to that. Or um, you can uh, make a Google Doc. And paste it and give me the link to the Google Doc. That works really well too. Or you can upload the file. And, and a file, you can put it in a Word doc, you can put it in Notepad. Actually, the SQL file itself, if you save it, loads fine. Canvas treats it as a text file, it'll open it. it all of these things work. Right, so, and I only need the SQL. I don't need the answers unless in the question I specified it. There are a few, not in this, but when we when the answer is like a single value or something, I sometimes ask for the answer. But generally, I don't. I just want to see the SQL. Um, the other thing is, so um, I try not to tell you how to write the query in the question. Does that make sense? I want you to learn how to think about a, a somebody, a boss or somebody saying, uh, you know, something in more normal language and then you translate it into SQL. It's not real hard. I say return all the employees. That would be the easiest way to do that. I'll give you that one is select asterisk from employees. So right? just return everything about the employees. Uh, return only the last name, first name, and emails for all employees. Sort, list. When I say list, it's the same as just select, right? So list, list only the employees who have phones. There are things where you're doing different queries. The phones is because um, there are a few nulls in there, so it's a way of dealing with nulls. 
list employees whose last name starts with C. Uh, and I told you which tables to work. The first one's employee, the second's employee position. Some of these will make more sense with joins, but I'm not asking you to do joins because we haven't covered them. So you, even if it's just returning numbers, that's okay. You know, I'll show you literally next week, probably, probably Thursday, we'll do uh, joins. So don't worry about joins. You don't have to do things unless I specify. If you want to do a join because you know how, that's fine, but I, it's not required for this assignment. I'm assuming you don't know anything. I know that's not entirely true, but I, that's where we start. <laughs> Questions on that? And again, if, if I take any points off for anything, you're always welcome to fix it. Um, and I will give you the full points. Dates, don't worry about the dates. They're kind of a guideline, but we're likely to be way either ahead or behind at different times. And, and I, you can turn them in late and I don't penalize. But if I do see them piling up, I may try to talk to you and see if... Because <laughs> it gets really hard to do all these at the end. Okay. Any questions on those? Um, just not that it matters, but just... Okay, so I, I'm going to do a new query so that I don't have... Um, mess that one up because I want to post it. Um, if you use Metro Alt, I just want to show you a couple of things there. Just to give you a, the view of the land, because the hardest part of this is going to be figuring out where things are. So if I do select star from employee, and I'm going to F5 for both of those, there are about 500 employees. Okay, so employee has all their information. I didn't divide things up. Um, by person and things like that because it's a different situation. All, all the people are basically employees. I don't know. It's a kind of a big one. I, so I've got um, bus barns. Let's do... Let me just open Metro. Hold. So there are buses, so I'm just going to real quickly kind of do like a, just to show you what's there, select star. And if we need, I will give you some time on, we'll see where you guys are um, on Tuesday. But if you need time, I might be, I'll try to build in some time. Because I've taken most of your time today. So those are the buses. It doesn't tell you a lot. They have a bus number, bus type, uh, bus barn, and a purchase date. Um, the next one is Bus Barn. I do this a lot when I need to just see what's in something. Bus Barn isn't a very big table. It just has some barns and addresses. Um, bus Driver Shift. Basically, it's just a description of the, the different shifts. There's morning, afternoon, and evening. Um, bus route is a fairly big one. This is just the names of the routes, I think. So where they are, this is the, you know, like the zone that they're in with, with city. There's a couple that are cross zone, means they cover a cut more than one zone. So it just gives you a city there, basically for each bus route. Bus route stops. Is just the stops for each route, and that's a fairly large table. If you look down here, it says that there are, well, 14, 1,432 rows. So it's for each bus route. So all of these ones are bus stop, right? These are the stops. And there are the next one, 
bus route stops. Somewhere there's bus stops. Yeah, there is bus stops down there. I'm going to do it out of order. I'm going to try to make another, a different database, but it won't be for a while. One that's more consistent in its data. So these are the location of each stop, supposedly. Notice I don't have any numbers on them but for the address. But uh, Bus route stop schedule, is that actually? Yeah, so that's the supposedly the time that they stop at each stop, each route, what times they stop. And that has 103,000 rows. Um, the one that you probably will use the most as we go on is the bus schedule assignment. And what it has is the, the, the shift, the employee, the route, uh, the date, and what bus was assigned. So, so for each day, each route, each day, each shift, what bus driver, what. And that one, I think, has 365,000 rows. To which here. Yeah, I'm just going through the tables and showing what's in them just to give you the lay of the land a little bit because it's going to take a while to get the hang of this. It's a whole lot easier to work with the database if you make it and know what you've got. <laughs> um, so we did employee. We did bus stop. We did bus schedule assignment. Bus type just lists the types of buses. There's not a lot of types of buses. We did employee. There's employee position. There's fare. I actually want to look at fare. So fare just lists fares, and they change over the years. So with luck, uh, I'm going to go to ridership. No, I need to fix this. I may, I may uh, bring in an update to this at some point. Because the fare should be linked to ridership, and it's not. So I might add, uh, I, I may make that change. I can write a little script that I do that. I'm just give it to you. Positions are just a list of positions. We don't have to worry about the ridership right now. I don't think I have any s things, but it, it just, um, the fare should be linked to ridership so that you know which one did, you know, which, what fare was charged for each. <laughs> um, so that's the, the database, and that's the one we'll be using for the assignments for the most part. The biggest tables have about 300,000 rows. That's still small for a database. You know, I'd like to get something that has a million rows in the record of records and things. And the reason I'd like to do that is that there are things, there are a couple of things that we're not going to see, which aren't so relevant to the SQL class, but are relevant for the database structure. One is we don't see concurrency. You guys know what that is? where we're all um, trying to talk to the same database at the same time. That's concurrency, and there are issues that come up with that. And the other is uh, 
just tuning and efficiency. And you really don't see any tuning issues until you're into multi millions of records. <laughs> so, but both of those are kind of important skills. All right, so I will post this code. Um, I will help the couple people that need the, their, get their uh, machine set up. And I think that's it. I took most of your time. You still got about 20 minutes if you want it. If not, I will see how many people have turned stuff in next by my, uh, Tuesday. And if we need to, I'll give you some time. Probably we'll need to, although this is the this is the stuff that is mostly stuff you might have seen in 220. Right? Mostly, not all, but mostly. So I will post the video to